who would have thought it? From the scars of exclusion comes the power of inclusion, a story in miniature that chronicles where we are now, as a country and as a people. And we're talking about the DAR, also known as the Daughters of the American Revolution. The DAR is not just one thing. It's, it's heritage, it's preservation, it's commemoration, it's women's issues. The DAR was founded in 1890 for women whose ancestors were patriots in the Revolutionary War. Even though the first person killed in the Revolutionary War was black, and over 5,000 African Americans contributed to America's fight for independence, the DAR excluded women of color for many years. It made headlines most notably when the acclaimed African American contralto, Marian Anderson, was denied the right to perform at Constitution Hall by the DAR because of her color. Instead, and at the urging of Eleanor Roosevelt, who quit the DAR in protest, the singer performed at the Lincoln Memorial on April 9, 1939. how badly Marian Anderson was treated and I felt that I didn't want to align myself with such an organization. I worked for civil rights when I was growing up and uh, so later on <laughs> things have changed and as we say it's not your mother's DAR. No, this is not your mother's DAR anymore. It has changed over the years to welcome women of all races, religions, and ethnic backgrounds. So when the DAR hit the headlines again this summer, it was a very, very different story. For the first time, a woman of color was selected to be the president of a new DAR chapter. When they picked up the story in the New York Times, that was just, just completely unexpected. Did not even give it a thought. They called me, asked me about starting the chapter, that's fine. And then on the 4th of July on the front page, they uh, felt that it was an important milestone in the history of DAR. As Wilhelmina Rhodes Kelly sees it, today's DAR is all about history and patriotism, pure and simple. And that includes everybody. Well, I descend from a patriot of the Revolutionary War, Stephen H. Hamlin, who was not necessarily a soldier. He actually provided uh, a rifle and a horse and beef for the soldiers. He was white, he was European. It was his grandson, Edward Hamlin, who the family calls Ned, who had a committed relationship with a formerly enslaved woman, Dolly Scott, and they uh, had children together both before and after the Civil War. I'm also interested in this particular chapter because it's named after a relative of mine whose name is Increase Carpenter. And Increase Carpenter was a tavern owner in Queens during the Revolution and a patriot. And because of his patriotism, which was not very popular with the British, uh, he was executed. And he is buried here. It's on the campus of York College. Through genealogy, I have found that uh, there has been a member of my family that has served in every war that America has ever fought in, going back to the French and Indian War. So before the Revolution, it's an honor to know that uh, my family has contributed to the growth of what we now know as America. The big picture of this chapter, the Increased Carpenter chapter, is that we're, we're not old-fashioned. We're not sitting with funny hats having tea. We don't just stay at home. We reach out. We reach out to the Lawrence Cemetery. Uh, we reach out to the veterans. We reach out to the wounded in the hospital. We're interested in historic preservation. There's a lot going on here. Thank you. Now you are yeah. welcome, my darling. They are official. <laughs> we try to help people find their identity, find their foundation, share it with their children, and give them a sense of self. I uh, must know. Uh, where you've come from in order to really appreciate who you are 
and what your strengths are and what people have gone through uh, to uh, make it possible for you to live in this country that has so much and has uh, potential for even more greatness. Just as a footnote, the historic Marian Anderson concert at the Lincoln Memorial sparked a change in the DAR, and they welcomed the opera singer to Constitution Hall for a benefit concert for war relief in 1943 and for many occasions after that. <laughs>